My name's Lee Kirby. Come on. I'm a fourth generation farmer here in central Illinois. Hey there. Come here and see me. My dad farmed until just two years ago when he retired and I took over. I didn't raise Lee to be a farmer. He just, he was really interested from the time he was born, I guess. I have wanted to be a farmer as long as I can remember from the time I got my first toy tractor as a kid. When my dad started, there was no real data gathering. And since I've taken over in the past two years, started utilizing the information that we can gather from running our planter across the field, running our sprayer across the field, and then it, eventually running the combine across the field and seeing how all those steps have paid off. The biggest misconception out there, I think most people think that we just go out and apply chemicals and fertilizer whenever, or wherever we want, when really it's an expensive pass over the field. Each pass has to count. We're putting data in the system on what we're applying. All that information is being streamed from our uh, John Deere monitor direct to the iPad. So it's telling us what rate we're applying, how fast we're going, the total acres we've done so far this year. The machine's being steered by GPS, so it's all auto steer. Once I grab the steering wheel and turn it, it automatically turns off the auto steer. We'll get halfway through the turn. The GPS will get us back on track so that there's no overlap or missed coverage. And we'll go ahead and start spraying back the other way. And everything's recording again. We're on a section control. So as I begin to spray into this piece that I've already sprayed, the color on the map will change. And then sections of the boom automatically start shutting off so that we're not getting over application of product. I've learned that you don't put as much fertilizer on, and you can increase your yields just by utilizing all the data that he has. When I started, we always plowed, which just turns the soil upside down, but there was a lot of erosion. Our most important commodity on the farm is our soil and we're losing soil at such a rapid pace. Well, this is the bottom of what used to be an old pond. And then we have this three feet of really nice black dirt from years of plowing and water runoff that all collected down in here. Should be up on the farm where it's making us money and it's gone and you'll never get it back. We get a substantial amount of rain and everything gets saturated. If the ground doesn't have any cover crop, whatever runoff is coming off the field is taking soil with it. Whatever was attached to that soil particle as far as fertilizer or chemical is leaving with it. Now it's in the creeks, the streams, rivers, and we didn't feel comfortable with the way things were headed. so. We made the shift to no-till and cover crops and haven't looked back. Steve Kopp is one of my partners in farming, and uh, we're going to see him right now. He's right there, he's right there, he's right there. We're worried about our topsoil. We're worried about compaction. We're worried about our, our watershed that we're in. And so we're trying not to disrupt that soil you're exposing it to, to whatever Mother Nature can bring our way. Here's our seed unit that's, that meters the seed. This piece of equipment, our planter, disturbs very little soil. So when we make that pass through at five mile an hour, you've gone from having nothing disturbed to two inches disturbed and a seed placed at the right depth, at the right spacing, and it's just being duplicated row after row after row. Here's our old corn residue. Our rye's still slowly dying from its termination by spraying. And then uh, here we have our beans growing up through the, 
the rye and last year's corn residue. The technology piece has really paid dividends for us. We can pull up the yield map from last year's soybeans. We know what hybrid was here last year, how it performed, and we can build future plans off of that. So here in this picture, we can see some pretty significant ponding issues on this farm. I was using my yield maps and recognizing that we had an issue. In this area, we're, we're losing money and then using aerial pictures that I'd taken through the season to actually diagnose what was wrong. So if I compare the image from my drone with what the data is telling us, it paints a much clearer picture. What we have coming out of these pipes is all the subsurface drainage off our fields. We're striving for what comes off our field to look something like this. We want a nice, clear, clean runoff. That's our main goal. Last year especially, we had some really heavy rains in June. And our soils, we had very little erosion. Coming home and farming with my dad, he starts to see, man, the things that we've changed just since you've been here, have, I would have never thought that would have worked. We know, based on all the data we gather, that these conservation practices work, and there are things that we can do and continue to improve to be better stewards. It's slow to change people's minds, but I think in the end, there's hope. Here, take her. Oh! When I grow up, I'll be a farmer. <laughs> I don't want to do something that my kids are going to have to pay for in the future. It gives you that kind of sense of purpose, I would say, to know that, hey, we are doing everything we can to improve on not just our drinking water, but everybody's drinking water.